Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're gonna to be going over a certification path for developers. So the developer role within Salesforce is someone who is going to be using code to make changes to your Salesforce org. So this can be a highly sought after job because Salesforce has a base layer of code that every org is going to come with. So then developing across orgs is, is fairly simple. In addition to having the skills of being able to develop, you just have to know what the scenario and what other pieces of code are already in that org to be able to develop. But let's kind of jump into more of the um, developer role and how to be a good developer. Personally, in my experience, all of the best developers were once admins because they know the line between clicks versus code as Salesforce likes to call it, which is a line between using the um, configuration settings that Salesforce has for automations versus using code to create a very, very custom experience for your org. It is a lot easier to change clicks and customizations that were done without code than it is to make changes to code just because it's easier to test. Typically admins are going to have a lower salary and so it's easier to pay an admin to fix things than it is to pay a developer. And Salesforce is always working to reduce the load of developers and put more of those automation tasks onto the admins with configuration tools like what was the process builder that is now flows um, and other tools like the lead automation tools or the case automation tools. So while this makes it easier for admins, you may as a developer find more difficult one-off scenarios that you will be developing for. Another reason why it's really great to be an admin first is that if you find something that comes onto your desk that needs to be developed, but you know that it can be done with configuration, you can pass it to the admin and say, hey, this would be a lot more suited toward your skill set, and you can get back to developing other high need projects. So. Let's go ahead and start from the beginning of you don't really know anything about Salesforce or maybe you do know some about Salesforce and go through a certification path if you want to become a developer. There are going to be five main certifications, but that does not mean that you can't get other certifications. Any type of specialty certifications that you can get like CPQ or experiences can be really useful to you in looking for a developer job. So the first one is going to be the associate certification, which this one is a newer-ish certification from Salesforce that is geared towards super users or very beginners to Salesforce. This one is going to be easier than the admin certification and it is gonna cover how to learn Salesforce through Trailhead. It's going to cover some of the Salesforce ecosystem, how to move around Salesforce reporting and the data model and kind of a little bit of the security model. Uh, this is a great way to know if Salesforce is right for you, as well as to help you get a win under your belt before moving on to the admin because the admin is pretty difficult. The second one is going to be the admin certification. This one is going to be fairly difficult, especially if you are new to Salesforce. The reason why it's so difficult is because it bounces around a lot and you don't really know a lot about Salesforce yet. Whereas other certifications are fairly niche and will focus on one section or sector of Salesforce. The admin certification focuses on a lot of the admin role. So it goes from things like setting up users, how to freeze users, why you'd want to freeze users, to going into automations and how to use automations to then going into the data model, the security model, and the intricacies of that, as well as reporting and loads of other stuff. But this is going to come in really handy when you are a developer, so then you know the background of Salesforce, the data model and the security model are crucial to know as a developer, as well as the automations like we mentioned previously are super useful to know. So then if you have something that comes across your desk that could be an admin task, you can pass that back and get to developing, developing solutions that can't be done with configuration. All right, so that's going to be the admin certification. The third certification that you're gonna to need to get is going to be the app builder certification. So like the certification title is, it's more about the building of stuff within Salesforce. So more in depth into the data model, automations, the security model, and less of the random permissions and the user setup that you would find within the admin certification. There is a good amount of crossover. But how I like to view it, this certification, and how many others like to view the App Builder certification is that it is a nice bridge between the admin role and the developer role. So it helps you understand crucial concepts to know as a developer and when tasks can be done by an admin and when they should be done by a developer. All right, now you're going to get to your first developer certification. And there are going to be two developer certifications that I would recommend to become a developer. The first developer certification shows that you know about code and how to develop on Salesforce, 
but the developer 2 certification is where a lot of people really see value in where you really do know how to develop solutions on the Salesforce platform as a developer. And we'll get into why that is. But let's jump back into the developer one. This is going to be a 60 multiple choice question test and it is fairly difficult. Um, a lot of people find it more difficult than the admin certification, just because if you don't have any previous development experience or if you don't know much about the specific languages that are used within Salesforce, it can be really difficult to do. A lot of the questions will give you a line of code and ask you to point out what is wrong or what could be improved within that piece of code or what the code does. So it is a very time consuming certification as well as a pretty difficult certification and has to do with a lot of critical thinking. Then finally, you're gonna to come to the developer two certification, which a lot of recruiters and hiring managers will use this when they are looking to hire a developer as the, yes, they are a developer. And here's why. There's two sections to this exam. You're gonna to have to do four super badges and then you're gonna to have to do a multiple choice test. The test is going to be fairly similar to the developer one test, 60 multiple choice questions, maybe five extra, for testing purposes for Salesforce to test out new questions, but it should just be 60. But then the other part of this exam is going to be four super badges where you have to do hands-on coding challenges and you have to pass them. Once you have all four super badges and you have that multiple choice question passed, then you will get that certification. And those four super badges is what really sets the developer one versus the developer two certification apart from each other. Now there are additional certifications for the developer path, but those ones are kind of the main developer certifications. If you're wanting to go more in depth into other areas of being a developer, like being a CPQ developer, a marketing developer, an Omni Studio developer, or go into JavaScript, those certifications are available as developer specific certifications. You can also get more consultant certifications to be able to um, then qualify yourself for developer jobs that work with a specific section of Salesforce. So things like Tableau could be useful or Experience Cloud could be extremely useful. Field Service, um, CPQ could be really, really awesome for that as well. Each additional certification that you go into as a specialty will also increase your salary somewhat if a company has a need for that specific specialty. I will say though that CPQ developers make a lot of money, like a lot of money. So if you're wanting to make the most amount without being a CTA, I would look towards being a CPQ developer and having some other specialty certifications. One last thing to note about this developer path. It can be really daunting, especially if you are coming from a non-technical background and if you have not been a developer before. One thing that can really help ease this burden is working on personal projects. This can not only make this super fun for you, but you're also going to be learning skills that you'll be using with Salesforce later on. You can use these examples as some developer experience and you can show hiring managers and recruiters that you are super passionate about developing on the Salesforce platform. And having a project to show off that you're super passionate about is going to come across really well in an interview, that you are passionate about it and you're excited to work with them. But if you have any other certifications that you would add to this list, I would love to hear them down in the description down below and why you would choose those specific certifications for a developer. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can check out the courses down below or on salesforceupskill.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at EmilyCallMBA. Thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.